Before I get into this video, I want to remind you we're giving away a Tears of the Kingdom Nintendo Switch OLED edition. We're also giving away a Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition and a Tears of the Kingdom pin from PAX East. To enter, head down to the pig comment or the link in the description. And I wish all of you guys luck. We draw the winner this Friday, May 12th. Winners, there's actually three of them. Oh, and by the way, we're on a road to 133,000 subscribers. So I would appreciate if you go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel, and let's try to match 133 years of Nintendo. All right, guys, this is big. This is huge. A new developer interview has dropped. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. This has to do with Tears of the Kingdom. It says, Ask the Developer, Volume 9, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Part 1. This is only Part 1 of the interview. We assume they'll drop a part every single night. Let's go through it. As you can see, they are interviewing. Senior Officer Entertainment Planning and Development Division, IG, or AG, Aonuma, uh, Entertainment Planning and Development Department Production Group number three, Hitamaro Fubayashi, etc., etc., etc. This is the director of the game. This is the producer of the game. Uh, this is the Entertainment Planning and Development Department. I'm not sure uh, what his role is in the game yet. Some of these guys are obviously musical roles as well. All right. Let's get into what it says. In this ninth volume of the Ask Developer, an interview series in which Nintendo develops convey in the developers convey in their own words Nintendo's thoughts about creating products and the specific points they are particular about. We're talking to developers behind the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom game for the Nintendo Switch system. Launches May 12th. This article has been translated from the original Japanese, and the images shown in this interview were created during development. So part one, what to change and what to keep. First, I could ask you to briefly introduce yourself. So A.G. Aonuma, referred to as Aonuma from this point on. Hello, I'm A.G. Aonuma, the producer of the Legend of Zelda series. My first role in the series was designing dungeons for Ocarina of Time. I served as the director and producer of Twilight Princess, and I've been the series producer ever since. All right, moving down, Hitamaro Fubayashi, referred to as Fubayashi from this point on. Hello, I'm Hitamaro Fubayashi, the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom director, Continuing from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword and the previous game, Breath of the Wild, I proposed the fundamental idea of the game and directed the entire production team. And then uh, Tukahiro Dota says, referred as Dota from this point forward. Hi, I'm Tukahiro Dota, the technical director for this game. I've been involved in the Legend of Zelda series in various different roles, but Breath of the Wild was the first time I worked on a Legend of Zelda game from the very start. In this title, too, I was responsible for the game's overall technical direction. And then Satoru Takazawa. Hi, I'm Satoru Takazawa, the art director for this game. I first joined the series with Ocarina of Time, and since then I've been handling artwork and design for titles such as Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and coordinated visuals since Breath of the Wild. All right, moving on down, we have uh, Hajim Wake, and I'm probably butchering these names, by the way. I haven't seen some of these names or pronounced them ever. Um, hello, I'm Hajim Wake, the sound director. My first involvement in the series was when I composed music for The Wind Waker. I've been involved as the sound director for the series since Skyward Sword. Thank you very much. May Many may already be familiar with, but Aonuma san, could you give us a brief introduction to the Zelda series? He says, Of course, the Legend of Zelda series is set in the Kingdom of Hyrule, where the sacred power of goddesses resides. It is a series featuring both action and puzzle solving, in which the protagonist Link, the player's avatar, battles against Ganondorf and others who are scheming to obtain the power. In many games, Link must also help Princess Zelda, who is destined to be endowed with the sacred power of the goddesses. This title, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, is a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild, which released in 2017. Once again, it takes place in the vast land of Hyrule after the conclusion of the previous game. So this title picks up after the events of Breath of the Wild. Aonuma says, yes, this title is set in Hyrule shortly after the ending of the previous game. There are many reasons why we chose this setting. After finishing development on the previous title, we wondered if we could make it possible for players to continue exploring the world after they reach the game's ending. The Legend of Zelda series seems to be one of those franchises where the visual style and game mechanics often change drastically for each entry. Was there ever a discussion about creating a new game with a completely new world rather than a sequel? Aonuma said, no, not really. Although the previous title, Breath of the Wild, has its own conclusion, we started coming up with new ideas that we wanted to bring to life in this already realized version of Hyrule, so our direction in making a sequel did not change. Fubayashi responds, Just like somewhere you know inside and out, we understand where everything is in Hyrule from Breath of the Wild, and because of that, we believed it was possible to create new gameplay. For this reason, in the initial proposal, we clearly stated the setting will not change as an important concept. Even when I shared this with the team members here, there was no objections, and we were all aligned on that idea from that point forward. 
Dota says, when I was working on the programming for Woohoo Island in Wii Sports Resort Development, I remember Miyamoto-san saying that he wanted to turn the actual stages of games into characters. What he meant by that was to create one island and use that as a base to add various kinds of gameplay in different games. The idea of having new discoveries in the same setting was striking to me, and I've been wanting to try this approach with other titles, and I suppose this game would leverage that kind of approach. I see. So the decision to create a sequel in the same setting was deliberate, Dota says. In contrast, we made some fairly big changes to the gameplay. In The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, if players wanted to travel from the sky to the ground, they had to select it selected from the map. But in this game, you can just dive from the sky directly to the ground without any interruption. On top of that, players can also ride on flying vehicles and so on, offering even more freedom within the same setting as the previous game. If a location were completely unfamiliar to you, you'd probably be hesitant to dive down from the sky. But because it's a world that you've already explored in the previous game, these transportation methods make sense. Being able to dive from the sky to the surface and into a pond seamlessly in this title sure does feel exhilarating. It truly feels like an open-air game this time around. Dota says... Adding the ability to dive from the sky was also partly due to Aonuma-san and Fubayashi-san's persistence, right? They laugh. Fubayashi responds, Yeah, I've wanted to make this happen since Skyward Sword, thinking how satisfying it'd be to dive from the sky and jump directly into the water. In this title, diving is not just about enjoying an exhilarating, seamless means of travel, but it also brings more value as a tool for gathering information about the surface by surveying from above. That's true. It's not just a satisfying way to travel. Laughs. So you're saying that being able to look over Hyrule from above and descend from the sky further expands the scope of the gameplay, right? Aonuma responds, that's right. But when we talk about these things, many may think, well, you can't enjoy this game unless you've already played the previous game and are familiar with the setting. But the new gameplay ideas we packed into this title are all things that can be solved intuitively. So I think first-timers can rest assured that this game is easy to get into. Fubayashi responds, the same goes for the story too. We put in some effort to make sure that it feels comfortable for both for first-time players and those with experience of the previous game. For example, we prepared a character profile feature that players can see any time during their adventure, so it's easy to understand the relationship between characters even without knowledge from the previous title. On the other hand, those who have played the previous game may enjoy reading those profiles because some of the content will make you grin and think, right, I remember that. Since this is a sequel, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the foundation, but I see there are also various considerations for new players as well. By the way, if you're using the same world, don't you need to put effort into creating differences in the graphics and sound? Takizawa responds, I keenly felt that implementing something new into the game world was actually harder than creating something from scratch. Although it is the same world, we want to make sure players experience it with a new sense of wonder. So to achieve that, we had to take a world originally made up of things we designed to fit it perfectly and then bolt a new layer of surprises on top, designed from a different perspective. We had to do so without erasing the familiar world, even though we racked our brains last time to put it all together. Laughs. Of course, from the development staff's point of view, it's definitely more fun to come up with ideas for creating new surprises, but it sure was a challenging process. Wake responds, for the game's music, we broke the conventions of the series in the previous game and mainly used piano tones. While this title follows the same musical direction, we grappled with how to create a sense of freshness as a sequel. The sound effects are generated by a completely new system that's different from the previous game, so even if the same sound is used, it sounds a lot more realistic in this game. For example, in Breath of the Wild, we tried to make nearby environmental sounds, such as bird calls, sound realistic. However, with this title, the expressiveness of this sound has improved to the point where players hear a bird call from afar and sense the distance more realistically. So with each element you were responsible for, you took on new challenges while working with the previous title as a framework. Fubuyashi responds, what to change and what to keep. We spent a lot of energy thinking about this. And then you can see part two is coming called Linking Hands. Guys, this is an absolutely incredible start to what's going to be an amazing interview. A nice callback to the old Owada ass days. And I am super stoked for this. You guys are epic and awesome. Let me know what you think about this interview so far down in the comments below. The most interesting part. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Yeah.